with another installment of Geek Dad. T minus five, four, three, two, one, and lift off of the Atlas V rocket. This is the kind of thing every geek dreams of going into space. Well, stop dreaming and come back down to Earth. Dylan Tweeney, contributor to Wired Magazine's Geek Dad column, is going to show you a different kind of space travel. Building and launching a rocket made from soda bottles. Before you can make a soda bottle rocket, you need some empty two-liter soda bottles. Like this. Now, you could just pour the soda down the drain, but we're going to empty them the Geek Dad way with some Mentos. It also helps to have a couple of cool assistants handy. Nice. This is where the kids are really useful. It's like minty. Okay, so you got your empty bottles. Time to build the rocket. Now this is a simple project you can do in about an afternoon. You take an ordinary two liter soda bottle, pressurize it with air and water, and with luck you can get this baby to go a hundred feet or more in the air. The first challenge is creating a launch pad that can pressurize the rocket and hang on to it until the moment of takeoff. The perfect item, a half inch PVC pipe. Half inch PVC pipe is just the right size to fit into the neck of a two liter soda bottle. All we need is some way to seal it up a little bit so the pressure doesn't leak out while we're pumping it up. That's where Nelson and Ben come in. Hi. So what I want you guys to do is to put an O-ring on here and that means we'll have to, you'll have to carve a little notch here for the O-ring to sit in on the launch pad. After inserting the PVC pipe, Nelson saws a groove for the O-ring to fit into and slides it into place. Next, you need to build a connector for the tire pump that's going to provide the pressurized air to launch your rocket. To do that, I've got a little PVC end cap that I drilled a 5 16 inch hole in. I'm going to take this hose barb connector and we're going to glue it onto the end of that, screw the connector into this elbow, and then glue the elbow onto the end of the PVC tube. The second step is to take this valve stem from an old bicycle inner tube that I cut out and glue it into the end of some vinyl tubing. Once that's dry, connect the vinyl tubing to it and then glue an elbow into the end of the PVC launch tube. We're going to take this one inch PVC collar and I'm going to stick it onto the end of a piece of one inch PVC pipe and we're going to take the rocket, put it in here, and cut notches on either side so that a wire inserted will hang on to that collar just like that and keep it from launching. The next thing we need is to drill some holes here and attach three eye bolts like this so we can stake the launcher down out in the field so it remains pointed up so the rocket goes that way instead of that way. That should do it. Now a quick check to make sure you've got everything. So put the release mechanism over that. All right, Ben, can you slide that rocket engine on? And that fits there. And here's our little release clip. Put that on and see if it holds it. So now just give that a little tug, see if it holds on. Oh, that's great. Now let's build some rockets. Finally, add some balsa wood fins, and if you're really daring, we want to take two bottles and stick them together like this so we have a four liter soda bottle rocket, and hopefully that'll go even higher. The rocket's done, but will it fly? We've got our launcher set up, and I'm just staking down these guidelines, uh, which hook up to the eye bolts here, so that it'll hold nice and firm until we pull out the trigger here and launch the rocket. Okay, so it's not Cape Canaveral, but use your imagination. So we're going to put it on the launch pad and see how high it goes. Secure the plastic tubing to a bicycle pump, and it's time to start pressurizing the soda bottle rocket. Three, two, one. And lift off of the Atlas V rocket. Whoa! I always wanted to say this. Let's see that again. Two, Two, one, three. launch! Whoa! Nice! <laughs>
Good job, guys. Yeah. Nice. I think that was a success. <laughs> For Wired Science, it's Geek Dad.